So guys, today I am working on the Echo CS2511-T, the lightest, most powerful, reliable saw you can buy, period. This thing is only five pounds and is 25 cc's. You can get it with a 12 or a 14 inch bar. This guy put a 16 inch bar, but he's a commercial tree cutter. I mean, he's pushing it just a little bit, but he dropped it 40 feet from up in a tree to the ground, did a little damage, but today we're gonna fix it. So when he brought it in, I was a little scared. It had a little cosmetic damage right here on the outside of the rewind cover. But other than that, the saw looked like it was still in really good shape. Well used, but still in really good shape. The handle wasn't broke. The chain brake was still good. The bar was even in good shape, but it wouldn't start. So the first thing I do, I start tearing it apart and checking and seeing what's wrong. And an easy thing I found was the intake boot had ripped into two pieces. Now this boot actually connects to the cylinder block and then to a base on the back of the air filter base where the carburetor suctions up to it and that's your intake to your cylinder. But it is rubber here. This is a metal bracket and this part's all squishy rubber and it completely broke in two. So I knew that was definitely an issue and I bought the part and replaced it for him. But when I went to go put it back in, I found more things wrong. As you can see here, I've got the new intake boot in place. Went to go tighten it down. It has two holes here. These holes is what holds the carburetor to the intake boot and the air filter base. And then these two holes here is what holds the intake boot with that bracket on the back of it, the, this metal bracket here, to the cylinder. Well, the left one tightened up just fine, but the right one, it ripped all the threads out whenever it ripped the intake boot out. So that's not good. So I call the customer, I let him know the situation and tell him that I can try to retap it and put a different size bolt in there, but he's a commercial guy. He wants to know that this thing's gonna run. Did find out that the entire engine, look at how cute this thing is. Look at how tiny. This entire engine is only $150. Now this saw brand new is $459. This is a very, very nice saw. Why? Because it is only five pounds with 25 cc's. That's, that's unheard of. It's the smallest, most powerful chainsaw in the world. And with the whole engine, not even just, you know, the piston and cylinder, it's got the whole bottom end to it too, is only 150 bucks with labor. He's looking at around maybe, 200 250 dollars to have pretty much a brand new saw again so it was totally the way to go now this is the second one i've done so it's not my first rodeo but the first time i did one i was super scared because i mean this thing's so tiny and so compact i was like how is this ever going to come out and go back in but it is the most simplest chainsaw repair ever let's do it let's tear it all apart down to nothing put it all back all right, so I'm trying something a little different today. I know I've done this before. I made a Poulan video where I showed how fast I can completely tear down a Poulan doing fuel lines, carburetor kit, all of that. And it was about 30 minutes until I ran into a snag, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bar and chain, get them out of the way. But I'm doing um, split screens, so hopefully you'll be able to see this from two angles. <laughs> Oh, this is a long bar for this saw. It really does not need to have a 16 inch bar. And it's also stuck in the tip. But he's got a 56 driver chain on a 57 driver bar. What you think? That's the way uh, commercial guys roll sometimes. Cause that is an echo bar. And it's totally 56 drivers. It's not an odd, odd number. So yeah, that's why it was so hard to get off because the Echo 16 inches take 57 drivers, which is a whole, the drivers is this part right down here. So this whole section, it is missing. So Al tool set, where are you? Let's get that out. And I love this set and I put it in the link in the description box below. It's Al tools torque bit set and it's seven through 40. So that's pretty awesome. And we need a 
27. Don't even act like you can see. Yep, 27. be better there's some dirt clogged in it we'll set these over there is there another one nope i'm gonna take our muffler off which oh it got smushed wow i don't know if you can see it in that video yeah look at how smushed up that is that is not good we're going to probably want to eventually get him another muffler because they really are. I've, I've seen some mufflers that are barely smushed at all and it will not regulate the heat like it should. And everything will get really hot. That's sad. Okay. Why are those not torques? They're hex heads, of course. Well, let's get out my handy dandy wear a set here. I do leave this in the description box below. It's a really cool kit. I love mine. Because it's articulating, so it, it you can go really fast if you need to un you know screw something this way and then you know flip it over. It's great. And take my plug out. Which I will need a different spark plug tool. Y'all see my uh, Star Wars pants? <laughs> That's what's nice about, you know, working at home. I can wear whatever I want. next we're going to take the coil off we're going to put the piston stop in and we're going to take the sprocket and the flywheel off so let's get to that i don't think i want to use that for coil removal now the thing about it is, is you don't want to take pictures because <laughs> Oh, there's too much gookie in that hole. Need something pokey. To clean the hole out. Because there is a lot to taking this apart, but it seems like, ah, uh, but it's really not that bad. And if you missed it, in a couple videos, I did announce the winner, Anthony Chiodi. He won the um, Gulu GT4000 in my giveaway. So I had a lot of people commenting on who won and I didn't want you to think that didn't happen. So you might've missed the video. Woo, let's drop that one. I don't want to lose any washers that are there. Nope, no washer, okay. Kill wire. We want to take that off because we just want it to stay where it is. Pliers. Try not to pull on these. You want to pry off of it. There we go. And then I should be able to pull. Where's my boot? Where's my boot? In fact, I probably don't even need to take that out. I can just like leave that up to the side. That'd be good. All right, I gotta find my piston stop because we gotta take the sprocket and the flywheel off. Yep, now I know you saw the Star Wars pants. <laughs> oh, I need my 10 millimeter. I don't have one here, I bet. I'm gonna have to find a piece of rope. Be right back. So while I'm here, before I lose these pieces, there's a little retainer right here that goes in the inside of the intake boot and this little plastic piece right here. I'm gonna take both of these out and set them aside. 
See, look at how tiny that thing is. You can definitely lose that. And I almost missed them, but there is two little spacers that sit between the coil and the cylinder block, and you don't want to lose those. Those are very important. <laughs> so thank goodness they were stuck on there with goo, I guess. Okay, so I looked high and low for a pull rope, a new one that I had laying around the house. I did not have one. I could have probably, you know, cut something out of a unit that I have sitting here, but you really don't want to use an old rope because whenever you're putting into the cylinder to stop the piston, you don't want it to be having like little fray stuff. Um, you really don't want to use anything that's too uh, squishy to get stuck between the exhaust port or the intake port as you're going up and or down and that will make a little piece of it break off actually and get stuck in between the cylinder wall. So you don't want to do that. But what I did find is an old bathing suit top <laughs> and you know, use whatever works. And this is actually sort of fantastic because I'm never going to wear this bathing suit again because it's ugly and it's a really good string to put down into the cylinder because it, I, I don't see it getting pinched like a lot of other things. So yeah, that's going to work great. So I'm going to stick this down in my cylinder hole. And the reason I can't use the piston stop I have here, I have a 10 millimeter at work, but I need to get one for the house because these take those tiny little, you know, CMR 6H plugs and I don't have the piston stop. So, but this is simple too. We're going to stick as much and I'm probably going to get past the exhaust port. I'm going to turn the cylinder until uh, it's already past. So I don't, yeah, I'm already there anyways, because I don't want it getting pinched off in the exhaust. Okay, and as you can see, I put a lot of that that uh, string in there. So first thing we're gonna do is remove the clutch. Now, anytime you take a clutch off of a chainsaw, this one actually has the arrows saying off going this way, but it's always backwards thread. So it'll be righty, loosey, lefty, tidy on these. So, and oh, wow, check this out <laughs> while I have it apart. I want you to be able to see it. That is the pile of thread sitting behind that screw hole where they just got ripped out. Wow. All right, now the fun part. I want to get some leverage under here while I got my punch going. And I'm going to push down with my chest. <laughs> you have leverage up on the flywheel while I'm hitting it. And it should work. Come on. There we go. And my punch is stuck. There we go. And we got the flywheel off. Looks good. The new engine comes with a new key, so I don't have to worry about that. And let's blow this thing off because I can't see all the screw holes. All right, back at it. Now that I can see some holes there, start taking the oiler off. Once again, too much cookie. It's like two screws holding that on. The gear on the oiler still looks good. Push the hose off. Always better to push away than to pull on these lines. Oiler just needs to... Let's take the worm gear out. 
Alright, then we got some wiggle room there. Put the screws with that. Let's go around the other side. I think that's my secret screw way down in this hole, maybe. Yes, there's a secret screw on the flywheel side. I knew last time I took one apart, I was like, this should just fall right out of here. And it didn't until I found that one. There might be another one down there. I gotta figure it out. Yeah, because it's still not loose. Maybe. I know it's so hard to see when you can't. Yeah, there's a screw down there. Get through all this gookie. In the hole. There we are. Oh, oh, it's in. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes the little joys in life. Okay. And last but not least, the super duper secret screw right back here is the last one. right out then. Yep. It's coming. It's coming. Oh. Get around all your plastic parts there. Hammer. Back, babe. All out. <laughs> yep. It's just got a little piece of plastic right there. clean the inside of this out and we'll start putting it back together okay so I got all my parts cleaned up we're ready to put it all back together so we're gonna do everything we just did but backwards <laughs>
go ahead and put my rewind back on. Got my muffler cover back on. It just has one screw down there, one screw right there. Next, I gotta put my intake boot mounted back to the cylinder. So I've got my two screws that I'm gonna put in there and I am gonna use a little thread lock. All right, so I've got my two screws in holding my intake boot to the cylinder and I got my little ring back in and this little plastic piece and I let it sit for a while to dry. Now to put my carburetor back on, I have my throttle lever right here and the choke is, is right here. So there is no choke lever because it comes out right the side here. Now I do have this fuel nipple right here. It's gonna go into this hole up here and then I'm gonna reattach this fuel line down to this nipple right here and then put the throttle lever back in the throttle valve right here. And got everything put back together. Now his air filter is gross and I didn't bring one home. I'm gonna blow this out and use it for today but I am gonna get him a new one. That about wraps it up. I think we can put our bar and chain back on. I am going to put some straight two cycle oil right down into the cylinder in the spark plug hole before I um, run it. I'm gonna pull it a few times. It will smoke whenever I first start it, but that's okay. I'd rather be safe than sorry. It'll get the piston and cylinder nice and lubricated before I go at it. So let's uh, see what it does. All right, guys, now it's time to see how she fires up. I have to admit, <laughs> I filled the cylinder with oil to run it through a few times, get it real lubricated. Then I put a little bit of gas down, gas mix down into the cylinder and went to go pull it. And I brought it outside and I went to just pull it, making sure, you know, I didn't want to be pulling on it 20 times in front of everybody, them thinking that it was something wrong with the saw when actually it was, it actually fouls the plug out a little bit and you have to pull on it a bunch. But as I was doing that, it started. So it runs great. Let's see it. Turned on. see how she cuts now this chain is not perfect but the customer didn't say anything about messing with his chains he probably sharpens them themselves so we'll see how she cuts for a five pound 25 cc saw that you can use with one hand that thing is Awesome. Dude, you gotta get out of my chair. I gotta finish the video. Hey, get up. <laughs> well, that's the fix, guys. I am super happy about that one. It runs so good. Man, I love these saws. If you'd like to get your own, I will leave a link in the description box below to the CS2511T. And also, if you're going to replace your own engine in it, in case, who knows what happened, it is an SB1120 short block, so you can look that up. So yeah, that's awesome. Thanks again for tuning in to Chicanic. Hopefully this video saves you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find me on Instagram at The Real Chicanic, or find me at Chicanic.com, where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.